All right, this video continues our deep dive into texturing. We're going to show how to take files from Substance Painter into Maya so that we can render them using the Arnold rendering engine. So the workflow here is uh, I started with some geometry from Rhino, uh, shrink wrapping spheres, brought that geometry into Substance Painter uh, and applied some materials that I developed in Substance Sampler and now that I've applied the materials, I want to export this so I can render it in, uh, in Maya. So to do this, um, I've got my texture set up here. Um, by default, these are, well, not by default, but I have each texture set set up as a 20 by 48 texture, and which was a 2K texture. And I can change that when we export. Uh, it's also important to realize that since this geometry is coming from Rhino, I used Substance Painter to unroll the UV maps. So to remind everyone what that is, if I hit the F1 key, I can see the UV map for this object. And this did not exist prior to Painter. And so it's important that I export not only the textures, but also the model. Uh, and the unrolled UV information so that that information is accessible in Maya. So how do I do this? If we go back to the model, first I'm going to export the model. File, export mesh. I don't want to apply the, tri uh, the triangulation and I don't want to apply the displacement because the displacement will happen in Maya. And I don't want to apply the triangulation because um, I have a nice quad model here and I can continue giving it subdivisions in Maya with Arnold, and that's going to work better if I don't have triangles. So I'm going to export this. I will put this on my desktop. Maybe I'll make a new folder. Let's see, new folder. Um, substance Painter Tutorial. So I'll use this folder and lab for painter file, that's fine. Um, hit save, and we've exported our mesh. Oh, I should point out, export mesh, export. We are using the FBX file type, not OBJ. And I think this will just make it easier for our UV maps to be packaged into one file. So we are using the FBX format here. Next, we need to export our textures. So I'm going to, under Export Mesh, find Export Textures. And let's look at this window. I'm going to choose both textures. That's great. And um, I'm going to use the Arnold template. So whatever this is by default, since I'm taking this into Maya, I'm going to use the Arnold AI standard template. And the file type, PNG, that's fine. Um, this could be 8 bits or um, 16 bits, that's fine. And I'm actually going to up the texture size to, 40, to uh, 40 by 96. So this will give us a very high resolution texture. And um, by choosing the Arnold standard texture setting, output template, it's going to ensure that we have all of the maps that Arnold needs. I'm going to change the export location to, let's see, the desktop, Substance Painter tutorial. So I'm going to select that as my folder. And um, now I'm going to hit save. I'm just going to hit export. And it will take a minute for the textures to export. Let me hit pause while it does that. OK, it didn't take too long. And now we can see that all of our textures have been exported successfully. All right, so now let's look at that folder. So I'm going to pull it up and grab my desktop and painter tutorial. And let's see what we have in here. We have our um, FBX mesh, and then we have our two textures. Each one was assigned to an object. And if we can look here and see all of the cool channels 
that uh, are made. So this is the color channel. And um, all of these other wild artifacts here are just, um, it's just bleeding the color at the edge of the unrolled map so that the uh, texture gets applied seamlessly. We can see here the height map. Um, you can see the metalness. There is no metalness here. And the normal, so the normals add um, extra, um, extra texture information and the, um, which is not related to displacement, but gives the illusion of font. So it's kind of like font mapping. And then we have our roughness channel here. And then we have the same uh, channels for the other texture. So now let's jump into Maya and apply these things. So do I have Maya open? No, so I'm gonna open that. And okay, here we are in Maya. File, import, let's find import. Let's bring from our desktop the FBX. Oops, I'm in the wrong folder. Let's bring in this FBX file, import, hit F to, to find the object. So here is our geometry. And let me go ahead and put the sky down on the background. All right, so now I have these guys. Let's just double check that our UVs look like they're matching. So I can come up to the top here, look at the UV editor, pull it over, and I can see, in fact, that this looks like our map in Painter. So everything should work nicely. And now I need to bring in the materials. And we should have, if you on in Maya 25, uh, 2025 and up, have a substance import node. Um, if you don't see this, you can turn on the plugin and we'll have this um, <clears throat> file menu here. And then you should also have a shelf that says substance. If you do not see this, you can go to Windows, Settings, Preferences, and the Plugin Manager, and then search for Substance, and Load, and then Auto Load, and hit Refresh. And now if you select Auto Load, this should always load with Maya. All right, so once you've got the plugin available, for this particular workflow, where we've, uh, we're bringing in a mesh from Painter, or, and we've applied materials to it, and we've made a um, basically we what we need to do is make a custom shader that has that material map and we will apply it to our mesh and we can do that with this icon here apply workflow to maps and also you can get it from the drop down here apply workflow to maps so let's go ahead and click that apply workflow to maps and we are going to start by bringing in our first material and our, we'll select multiple maps. And then, um, right, we're here in the Substance Painter tutorial file, and we want to select all of the maps that have material one. So we'll select all of these, hit select. We can see that all of these pop into the channels that we're interested in, and we can hit apply. Now we can open the Hypershade and if we look in the shading groups, which will be the easiest place to find it. Maya's stuck for a moment, let me hit pause. Oh, now it's back. Um, we can see here that we have a new texture called set one. And I'm gonna bring this down in. And so again, I'm in the shading group, I find set one, and it doesn't look very impressive, but I can now hit show input and output connections here, and it shows the whole network. For some reason, at least in the version of the plugin that I'm using, it links up everything correctly, but it does not link up the, um, the base color. So to complete this texture import, we need to go ahead and grab the out color here and stick it into our base color. And um, let's change our set one to um, a new name and we'll call it set one. We're going to call this um, substance, or let's say sub underscore map one. And that way, when we bring in the next one, it will be very easy to find. All right, I'm now going to apply this 
texture to our model. And let me just close the hypershade for a moment and hit render and see what we get. Okay, great. This is looking good. Um, so it seems to be matching exactly what we have in Painter. Uh, I'm getting a little warning down here, so let's check that out. It says the padding is smaller than it needs to be, the recommendation, recommended padding. So this has to do with displacement. So we need to increase our displacement padding, and we can do that in Hypershade under the Displacement Shader node. And we can set our padding here under Arnold to, it wants 0.2, but let's just give it a padding of one. and That should fix everything. Let's stop this, redo the rendering. Now that warning goes away. Okay, before we bring in the next one, I wanna quickly show the, um, let's double check our bump map here, and or our displacement map rather. I'm gonna open up the hypershade and uh, I've linked up the color, but now I want to get rid of this base color. And in the standard surface here, I want to take that color back to a gray color. And I want to look at the rendering. Well, it's going to be easier if I just close this. Ah, and so now, if I zoom in here, I can see my displacement and how it's working. And um, I can either choose to increase it or decrease it. I am getting bumpiness here, so it um, all seems to be working pretty well. We can look also at the um, bump 2D. So we do have this bump 2D, uh, and the bump mapping is also producing some of the illusion of shading here. So I'm just going to turn, that goes into the normal channel, uh, camera channel. I'm going to delete that for a moment, that connection. And let's see if that makes a big difference here. Doesn't seem to be changing things that much. So it looks like, well, let's go to render and just to double check, update full scenes. If things ever don't match what you're expecting, you can always click update full scene. Okay, and it looks about the same. So I'm going to just plug this back into here. And then we could look at our material height. Um, our displacement here is set to one. And we could, if we, just to make sure this is all working the way that we think it is, we could take this down to zero. And let's look and see what that gives us. And so what I can see here is that it's subtle, but we're getting a, a really smooth sphere here, and there are no ups and downs. And that means that um, the displacement's not actually applied. This is just coming from the bump map. So if we take this bump map, bump map off, then we should actually see, yeah, a completely smooth thing. So now let's go back and look um, a couple more things. Um, we forgot to link up our um, add additional displacement to this or additional tessellation. So we need to come to the shape node of the map mesh that we've in, uh, imported. Go to Arnold and select subdivision, Catmull Clark. And we could give this maybe. Um, iterations of two and go back to our displacement shader. Let's take this scale to one. And now we can see that we've got quite a lot of depth. Um, we've got quite a lot of displacement and we've got lots of ups and downs here. We could then say, okay, before we add the color back on, are we happy with this? If we so chose, we could go back here and say, ah, maybe I want my displacement to be 0.5 to calm it down a little bit. And then I'm going to put our bump mapping back on. And now as a final step, just maximize this. I'm going to link our color channel here, so base color, and having gone through all of that, 
everything should be working exactly as I expect. Now, one downside, let's hit this and see if we get no, no errors. Okay, great. So this is all looking pretty good. Uh, let's say we wanted to change the color. So if we have uh, exposed parameters in Substance Sampler, we know that once we come into Substance Painter, uh, we could change colors, for example. Um, once we bring this in, we're just using the map. We can remap it, however, using a node in Substance or in Arnold. There is a color correct node. So if we go to AI color correct, um, you'll see that if we look at the <coughs> settings, of color correct that we have a saturation and a hue shift. So let's go ahead and put our input color in here and then lock this uh, so that we can see it in here and then start selecting hue shift here and you can see that I'm moving around and getting different colors. I can also make it brighter or uh, increase the intensity, increase or decrease the saturation. Uh, we can do all sorts of things here. Uh, we could even invert it, invert the colors. And so now that we have this running through our AI color correct node, we can bring this into our base color instead. And if we go back to our rendering, we're going to see that we now have a different color scheme on our model. So even though we, we do have um, the pattern from this map, which is fixed, we can still change the color and of course we can adjust the displacement. So let's go through this step, um, not all of these steps, but quickly show how we can import again our, um, again, uh, import our maps, our substance maps and apply them to this sphere. And we would do that by going to either the substance shelf or to this menu item. We can select apply image workflow to maps, or apply workflow to maps, select multiple maps, and now we're going to select material two. I should also note that when Maya converts these textures, um, the original textures get converted into .tx files, so it makes new files um, with the name of your file name plus the color space, and then um, it uh, makes this little TX file. So it's going to make these additional files. But if you re-import it, it will just overwrite these files. So don't worry about that. Just understand that new files will appear. So now I'm bringing in this. Now we need to go to Hypershade. Oops. All right. So that was a bit um, dumb on my part to have both of these. Uh, I should have switched to a new window. And so let's just clear this out. Let me go to the shading groups and I'm going to go to, um, so this is our substance material one. So this is the one that we imported first. And now let's grab the set one and show all of the nodes for that. Okay, base color uh, should be, I don't know why this is not linked up, should be linked up. So I want to make sure that that up color is, well, where's my, this is very, very strange. Very strange. Uh, oh, this is the new one. This is the new one, but this is not the one that I wanted. Ah, okay. I think I just did something crazy here. So let's bring this one down, middle mouse button drag, and that's what I'm ex expecting. Yeah, okay. The things are a little bit mixed up, but yeah, this is the one that we did before. And we can save it on this tab, and we can call this um, painter one. Now I want to make a new workspace in Hypershade just to, um, to keep this separate and clear. And I'm, now I'm going to bring in set one. So because we overwrite wrote the original set one, now it brings this again in as set one and this second material. And now here we have this. So we need to link the base color up because it doesn't do that automatically. And we could call this um, sub underscore material two, oops, not mate two, mate oh one, but mat o two, there we go. And we can call this tab painter two. 
and that makes it really easy for us to jump back and edit these different materials. So submaterial 2 now wants to come to this sphere. Maximize this, minimize this. And let's just make sure. Let's go to, um, seems to be, well, no, it's, oh, OK. Maybe something's a little goofy here. Let me go back into the material editor here. Did I accidentally apply it to both? So standard surface one shader one color. Where am I here? So this is painter one. Sub material one. That's good. And I want to bring that over. And does that? Yeah, and that fixes it. Okay, great. So now I can close this, and now we can see that I have that second material popping in there. And then I could. Um, I could also add a hue shift to this, or a color correct rather, and then I could shift the hue or change things about that color if I didn't like it. But um, we're not going to do that because we are finished. And this shows how you can bring in your Substance Painter files and link them up very easily in Arnold. Thanks for watching.